guys. Welcome to the Cellular Respiration presentation. This first picture um, is there because I want you to understand that ATP is the star of the show this time. Cellular respiration is all about how to make ATP. ATP, as you all know, stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is one big molecule made of five smaller molecules bonded together. It's made of an adenine, a ribose sugar, and three. So how does ATP exactly give cells energy? ATP is going to break apart and release its energy. When ATP breaks apart, it releases energy and loses a phosphate group. That means that it's now ADP. So after ATP breaks apart and releases energy, what happens? ATP releases its energy and it gives us ADP. And then what? It's recharged, just like a battery. ADP uses its energy, and then it gains an extra P and is recharged back to ATP. Um, and we talked about this in the ADP to ATP cycle um, in photosynthesis. So you can think of ADP as being like a partially charged battery while ATP is a fully charged battery. So just as a quick review, what happens to a phosphate bond when energy is released? The bond is broken. So if you break a bond, you release energy. If you want to store energy, you must form a bond. So cellular respiration is a chemical process in which glucose molecules are broken down to release ATP that's needed for cellular functions. Like photosynthesis, cellular respiration has a specific chemical reaction that happens every time. And it's gonna actually look kind of familiar to you. We breathe in oxygen and get glucose from our food. And we breathe out carbon dioxide. But the overall reaction is oxygen plus glucose yields carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. Pause the video and look at the reaction for a little while and think about why it seems so familiar. This is actually the opposite of photosynthesis, right? So photosynthesis is carbon dioxide plus water in the presence of light yields oxygen and glucose. Whereas this reaction is oxygen and glucose yields carbon dioxide plus water plus energy. And in this case, the energy is not light, it's ATP. So cellular respiration can be divided into two main parts. There's aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. In aerobic respiration, oxygen is required and it happens in the mitochondria of the cell. So if you think about an animal cell, sometimes you'll see the word mitochondrion instead of mitochondria, but they're the same thing, okay? And one thing I wanna tell you about the mitochondria is that mitochondria, just like chloroplasts, have their own DNA. So in your cells, there are mitochondria 
that have their own DNA. And one way that this is used in real life is when someone is murdered, they sometimes can find DNA that's from the mitochondria, um, and that will tell them who the person's mother is. Um, so when they are tracing, for example, some of these ancient Egyptian um, mummies that they're finding, they're able to extract the mitochondrial DNA, and that can tell them who the mummy's mother is. Um, and I've seen some specials where they've used that to construct family trees. So the DNA in the mitochondria is very important, and it comes from your mom. Okay, anaerobic respiration does not need oxygen, and it happens in the cytoplasm of a cell. Now, let's talk about the steps that are in cellular respiration. The first step is called glycolysis. In glycolysis, glucose is broken. So glycolysis literally means to break apart glucose. Glycolysis is an anaerobic respiration process. Therefore, where does glycolysis happen? If you said cytoplasm, you're right. And it does not require correct oxygen. Good job. So in glycolysis, where we're breaking apart glucose, the very first thing that happens is glucose enters the cytoplasm of the cell. There are enzymes that break glucose into two molecules. This part of glycolysis uses two ATP molecules. These smaller molecules that um, glucose is made into are called pyruvate or pyruvic acid. When the bonds in glucose break, energy is released and it's stored in four ATP molecules. So glycolysis makes four ATP, but it uses two ATP. So the net gain of glycolysis is two ATP. So when you think about net gain, overall, how many ATP are there? So four minus two, because we use two, gives us two. So the products of glycolysis are pyruvate, and we have two of those, and two ATP molecules. After we finish glycolysis, the cell has only used 10% of a glucose molecule. So that means that the process has to continue. So step one was glycolysis. Now, what's step two? Well, that kind of depends on what conditions the cell is under. So after glycolysis, we have to stop and think. Is there oxygen available to the cell? If yes, then we'll undergo aerobic respiration. If not, we'll undergo anaerobic respiration. First, let's talk about aerobic respiration. So the product of glycolysis, which are two pyruvate molecules, will then move into the mitochondria where they're used for aerobic respiration. So we took the glucose, we broke it into pyruvate and glycolysis. Now that pyruvate is going to go into the, um, sorry, it's going to go into the mitochondria, into the mitochondrial matrix. During aerobic respiration, there are two processes that take place in the mitochondria. There's Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, or you might see it written as the ECC. So the mitochondria has parts, and um, it does have a matrix, which is kind of the inside part. 
I've got Christae, which are these folds that are in the mitochondria. All right. And it's got an inner membrane and an outer membrane. So when the Krebs cycle takes place, the Krebs cycle is going to make carbon dioxide. And that carbon dioxide is going to be released. But it's also going to make two energy molecules called NAD and FAD. Your pyruvate going into Krebs cycle, and out comes carbon dioxide, mad and bad. Now, let's move into the electron transport chain. This ETC uses high energy electrons to convert ADP to ATP, and it also forms water. So as you see in the picture, the energy start, I'm sorry, the electrons start with very high energy. And as they go through the ETC, the electrons will make ATP, but they'll also lose energy, like going down steps. So at the very end, we have these low energy electrons that help to make water. Together, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain make about 34 ATP molecules. Now, this number is still hotly debated, but we're going to go with 34. So again, for aerobic respiration, we have our overall reaction. 6O2 plus glucose yields 6CO2 plus 6H2O plus energy in the form of ATP. In Krebs cycle, we make carbon dioxide and we make energy. And in the ETC or electron transport chain, we make water and we make a lot of energy, about 34. So our total products are water, carbon dioxide, and ATP. So, what happens if it's the other situation where there's no oxygen? So remember, after glycolysis, the cell thinks, is there oxygen available? If yes, we do the steps that we just did, aerobic respiration. If no, we have to move into anaerobic respiration. So in anaerobic respiration, this is releasing energy from food molecules without uh, oxygen, okay? Anaerobic respiration happens in the what? Where do anaerobic processes take place? If you said cytoplasm, you are correct. So remember, in a cell, this is going to take place in the cytoplasm, so outside of the mitochondria. There are two types of aerobic, anaerobic respiration. There's lactic acid fermentation, and there's alcoholic fermentation. You have all felt lactic acid fermentation happening before. So this is a process that occurs in animal cells when oxygen is absent. It happens during rapid periods of exercise. Um, when your body cannot supply enough oxygen to the tissues or to the muscles. So if you were to right now drop down to the floor and do a plank and try to hold it, you're going to begin to feel lactic acid fermentation take place. This is why our muscles burn after we work out. Okay, the lactic acid fermentation. Lactic acid is an acid and it burns. The other type of anaerobic fermentation is called alcoholic fermentation. This happens in plant cells and yeast in the absence of oxygen. So we actually did, and that is the end of our presentation on anaerobic respiration. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you in class. Bye-bye.